how did you get involved in Stargate? So can, can you tell us about being cast as Jonas? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was completely random. I was at uh, MGM Studios or their corporate offices auditioning for something totally different. It had nothing to do with Stargate. But the, uh, the, the casting agents for Stargate were working there, and they passed by me when I was sitting in a quad area reading over my lines for this other project. And I had read for them before in the past, and we started chatting. And at the time, I kind of had more longish hair and everything. And they're, like, talking, the, and they start saying, oh, yeah, we just got a new role for Stargate. It came up that day, the very day they saw me. The role of Jonas Quinn came up. And they're walking around, they look at me, they're like, and they start whispering, like, he kind of looks like Heath Ledger. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was like, that could be a good thing. And then they mentioned, like, they, they said, hey, you know, we're casting a new role for Stargate, this new character and all that. Would you be interested? Obviously, I said yes. Uh, so all I had to do was send over my reels, my demo reels up to Canada. And they looked at him and said, he's good enough. He's and good I, enough. You know, <laughs> It's Hollywood. This is true. <laughs> Corin, I got to ask, did you know what you were walking into um, coming in after after Michael left as far as the, the, the fan response? No, not a clue. Because uh, uh, the original Stargate was on Showtime for five years. Right. I didn't have Showtime. Yeah. So I one never guess, saw one, one guest spot uh, yeah, in Meridian was on Showtime. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't I didn't know anything about the show except for seeing the posters on bus stops and buses and billboards. That's as much as I knew about the show. And I love the original film, like the original Stargate film. One of my faves. Love it. So I got into it. I had no idea what the, you know, like I said about the conventions and all that, not a clue. I was shocked. And then uh, when I took over the role of, of, of uh, Jonas Quinn, replacing Michael Shanks. I got so much hate mail. <laughs> so much hate mail the first like like month and a half of the show. And then it shifted. And I got apology letters from people who <laughs> Yeah, they sent me hate mail saying, oh, hey, you're taking over my... And then I get a letter back like, I'm so sorry. We love you as Jonas. You're actually a great choice to replace him. My apologies for being a jerk or whatever, you know. So I, that was nice because some of the letters, I was like, am I about to be killed? <laughs> I was like, People I are bird? very, very um, serious about. Well, I thought I was getting arcans Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> am I actually, I feel like Harold Louder. They think I'm Harold. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't blow anybody up. Yeah, totally. Man, totally. well, what a what a ride! And at some point, I'd love to have you back for like a longer conversation about that year's journey. But I have, I have, yeah, um, we should do that. I sure. have some fans uh, that have submitted some questions for you, awesome. and I want to give. Do it. Yes, Akos wants to know what's the single thing you're most proud of about that about that journey, about your Stargate journey. Ooh. Honestly, I'd say that uh, being a part of such an epic sci-fi series and branded show, I didn't know until way after, you know, just how big of a deal it was that I got to be on that show as a series regular. That's when I was like, wow, I was part of something big. You know, it didn't hit me at first, but later on it did. Yeah, it's uh, it's a franchise that, and I said this earlier today in the previous interview, gets reinterpreted by every generation that watches it. Not necessarily completely differently, but they all find something in it for them. And that's why I think yeah, one exactly. of the cool things about sci-fi is that it gets it it uh, it blooms, it's timeless. yeah, timeless. It blooms with every generation. Uh, oh. Teresa wanted to know what it was like working with Dean Stockwell. Oh, my God, Dean. I worked with Dean Stockwell on the movie Tucker, my first film I ever did. He played, um, uh, who created the uh, the Grey Goose, the uh, the Big Plane? Oh, uh, was, he, uh, was it um, uh, uh, Hughes, Howard Hughes? 
Howard Hughes. Yeah, okay. so he played Howard Hughes in Tucker. Oh, did and I know I had that? A scene with me, it was me, Jeff Bridges, and him. Wow. Doing a scene. And he's so short that they had it. You know what Apple boxes are? <laughs> right. Yeah, but Apple boxes are like these square boxes they use in the film business to like stack things up or whatever. And they had to do an entire like, like, line of apple boxes for him <laughs> so he could do a walk because he's supposed to be because howard hughes was really tall yeah and and jeff bridges is like six and two sorry for the french no you're he's okay like six two and and so he was like so much shorter and they, so they had to build this whole thing this walkway of him so he could be looking as tall or taller than jeff but what was funny about it if you ever go, go back and watch the movie you'll notice that his waistline is way too high for as tall as he looks. <laughs> like, like, does this guy have like six foot long legs and like a, a three foot torso? Like, what is it? <laughs> but so that was the first time I worked with him, and uh, to work with him again on Stargate was amazing. I mean, he, you know, it was just so great to to re and you know reintroduce myself to him. We had great character scenes together. Amazing actor, amazing guy. And, uh, and, 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 and a legend to me in the film business. Oh my Absolute gosh, legend. absolutely. I mean, another yeah. child actor, you know, who has made a tremendous success of his, of his life. I mean, he's a Cylon for crying out loud, you know, and Quantum <laughs> Leap, you know? I know, no, Quantum Leap was amazing. Forget Quantum about Leap it. was amazing, absolutely. Michael May wanted to know, um, you, you worked with Rick, Amanda, uh, Christopher for a full season. Any special memories? Oh, well, uh, Christopher Farting Judge. Oh my gosh! Don't get me started. Any any positive uh, memories or special memories uh, working working with that uh, group of people? One hundred percent. Every every memory was positive. It was just see, I didn't know that Chris Judge liked to fart before scenes until I got on set. Yeah. So he had this joke he would do, and he'd wait, and they'd say, "Okay, roll sound." roll camera and just before they called action he would go and just rip a massive fart and then he'd say action and you're like <laughs> he just farted <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> i'm supposed to do my lines so, yeah so i learned early on don't stage myself behind chris judge <laughs> <laughs> i'm or dead the, serious or if the stage direction says that's like i'm not going there i know what he's gonna do <laughs> The first two episodes, I kept being behind him, and I'm like, yo, that's not cool. So after that, I was like, how about if I'm on this side of tapping or that side of Rick? Not behind Chris, please. <laughs> this is Chris's way of saying, welcome to the show. Totally, totally. <laughs> Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side. <laughs>